Hey everyone, my name is Mohit. Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, uh, we will talk about a very important topic that a lot of people have. That is how you can switch your career into DevOps. So in this video, we'll cover just that. And to talk about this topic, uh, we have with us Soumya from Google. So Soumya, if you would like to introduce yourself. So hello Mohit, hello everyone. I am Soumya Bhushan, as you already know, and I am currently working as a cloud consultant at Google. So I started my career as a DevOps engineer in 2021. I got hired directly from my college as a fresher in this role. Interesting fact about me is like I pursued my 12th as PCMB student. So I didn't do anything in computer science. That was like a completely different domain for me, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, later I realized that I am more interested in mathematics and uh, like I want to explore computer science first then. I just dropped, uh, like, I didn't pursue bio after 12th and I moved to a uh, college where I pursued B.Tech. And so I am I am a computer science student. I completed my B.Tech in 2021 and then I got hired in an organization to, uh, as a DevOps engineer, you can say. Yeah. So that was a small introduction about this. Yeah, that's very interesting. Like, I also uh, had uh, bio in 12th, but later moved into IT. So yeah, I think there are a lot of students, uh, right? So there are similar courses, like people are doing BCA, MCA, they are doing BTEC, BSC, IT is another thing, right? But after all, they all converge into this uh, one big field, right? So uh, let's start with uh, how we can start our career or transition into DevOps. So they can, I think there are two categories. One is the college students, freshers, uh, and the other one are the experienced folks. So let's first, let's start with the college students, right? So first of all, if some company is coming to their college and they are hiring for DevOps, then it's very simple, right? We, they just have to crack that uh, placement. But let's say uh, they don't have access to that many companies and they just decide to go off campus. Then what should be their approach? Like what things do they need to study and what things they need to put in a resume? Uh, according to you when i was studying in my college we didn't have that much idea about devops right mm -hmm. we were not very familiar about cloud and i was from a tier 3 college so it was just like development and stuff so if you can do dsa and if you know development if you can develop some projects then you are good to go for the placements right mm -hmm. so it's really great nowadays people like students are exploring uh cloud and they have a lot of knowledge about devops itself and this is really good uh, so, as you said already, like if these companies are coming to your college, right, as a fresher, you can get hired very easily. But if in your college, the companies are not coming to hire for fresher, because in DevOps role, it's it's little bit difficult to get hired as a fresher, right? Mm -hmm. So, in that case, what you can do, you can just uh, explore off-campus opportunities. So, you can go to LinkedIn, right? You can see a lot of posts for freshers as well so there are companies that hired fresher uh, as a devops engineer right so you can explore those opportunities on linkedin you can try to connect with people right try to connect with hr uh, try to connect with higher management people right and try to explore like what they uh, exactly need uh, for a fresher role right mm -hmm. you can also explore the job role there and you can prepare your resume uh, like that it's really important to do some projects in devops even if you are fresher you mm -hmm. should uh, really include some projects that you have done in mostly from the devops field right mm -hmm. so uh, add those in your resume and also apart from that try to explore what why and how so if you are learning devops it's not about tools, right? So DevOps is a practice. You should understand like what you are going to do as a DevOps engineer. For example, if you are implementing a CI/CD pipeline, you should understand why you are doing that. What is the use case around that? You should also understand the little bit of best practices around it, right? Try to do some end-to-end -end projects from, you know, automating stuff and, uh, you know, doing the deployments, monitoring and logging. Try to do a small project that covers everything in that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you should also, uh, you know, explore a little bit of troubleshooting, right? So these are the things that you should cover. I would also suggest one extra thing. Uh, you should try to also go to the community meetups, right? Where you can find like there are people that are hiring students or freshers, right? So these are some good, from there you can find some good opportunities. 
okay so uh, one thing that i used to do is right uh, i had a lot of connections on linkedin so whenever i was looking for a job i used to like uh, visit their profiles and then go to their company page and see like if their company is hiring for that particular role right so this is a cool trick that you guys can also do like go to their companies and uh, see if they are hiring for an intern and then you can just uh, message them directly and if you know them personally then even better right so you can try to get referral as a fresher you can also yeah. get referrals as a fresher if you have a little bit of projects that you have done and you have created a good resume then you can just Uh, you know try to connect with people or the uh, people th- those are working as a devops engineer in that company mm-hmm. try to share your resume and the projects that you have done and and try to get referrals so that's a very good start that you can do if you have seen some opportunities over linkedin so you summarize i think it's about networking uh, going to linkedin talking to people and going to conferences right events uh, so it's kind of a networking activity and i know like uh, while searching for a job it might get little depressing right because you have to do all these things just to get a job right but the good thing is that you're watching this video right so you're already uh, know these terms like little bit of ai devops and cloud right so these things definitely put an impact uh, on your resume okay so uh, I, so i want to take one step back so if someone is uh, you know reaching out to people and they are looking for a devops role right So, what are the like top three things that they should learn uh, before getting to getting into the job? And maybe those things they can list into the resume. Maybe it's Docker or something else, right? So, what are those things? Let's say I have two three months in my college. So, where should I spend those few months? So, whenever you are starting in this field, the things that you should know as a uh, like base or the minimal thing that you should need to know is like. you should know one operating system for example if you have interest in linux unix you should know what, how linux works what are different commands that you can use how you can uh, automate some task in linux right how to use command shell and things like that so you should understand linux and the troubleshooting inside linux right that is the beginning then you can go move to ci cd right mm-hmm. you can also learn cloud so any cloud will work whether it is aws gcp so you need to understand like how how you can create services inside cloud and what are the use case of those services and then you can move to docker and kubernetes so it's basically containerization and orchestration you need to learn mm-hmm. uh, as a part of automation you should also learn to you know create those infrastructures in cloud through any automation tool so you can consider it as iec tool Mm-hmm. So for example terraform is widely used in the market and it's quite famous so you can learn terraform and finally once you have a clear understanding of containerization orchestration then you can go with the deployment of your application on cloud and for ci cd do you have any recommendation like which free ci cd tool they can use which is like easy to use and easy to learn So initially, mostly people, or in right now also, most of the organization use Jenkins. But I would suggest move from Jenkins and start using some uh, like tools like GitHub Actions. So it's very easy to learn if you understand why you are doing CI/CD. So it's just a YAML file. So you just need to understand how YAML file works and how it is written, and it's quite easy, right? Mm-hmm. So you can start. I would suggest start with GitHub Actions. So that is one tool that I will suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. And I think uh, what we have seen from our experience is that like a lot of companies they are moving away from Jenkins, uh, right? So since GitHub Actions has a YAML based structure, and a lot of other tools also have that structure, so it becomes very familiar for them as well. So if you yeah. start working with GitHub Actions and write YAMLs, then that will help you with other tools as well, and maybe Kubernetes as well. And one more thing that I missed was like. at least no shell scripting or python scripting mm-hmm. so a little bit of idea about that like how shell scripting work work so if you are learning linux learn shell scripting with that mm-hmm. or if you have a little bit idea ab- about programming you can also learn python scripting so that's one more thing that i like to add yeah okay so i think that's like total of four to five things i think that that we also covered in the road map so from from where should we learn these things like should we learn it from youtube google or should we take a course so what was the best way so 
I would suggest learn by doing. So that's the motto, right? Uh-huh. Learn by doing. So even uh, you can learn from anywhere. You can learn from documentation. You can go to YouTube. YouTube is a very good platform from where you can learn the end-to-end projects. Uh, you can also you know explore blogs, official documentation. That all works, right? So go to YouTube, search for the things that you want to do. right and start learning those right start learning those and try to create projects right project creation is very important so as i mentioned learn by doing that means try to do some end to end project where all of the devops cycle gets included right mm-hmm. so it's very important to you know do some projects mm-hmm. so that's the uh, that's the sources that i would suggest you can explore and there are a lot of good tutors on youtube so there are lots of free materials that you can so i would suggest always try to add some best practices mm-hmm. if you are using any tools just or if you are using any concept try to understand what is the best practices around it mm-hmm. the second thing that you can incorporate is the security security is a very major part and even as a fresher you can explore uh, the fields around the security that you can add in your devops which can be a devsecops but yeah uh, at least you should know a little bit about security and right now ai is on boom so if you want to explore as a fresher you can also explore ai in this field but uh, as a beginner i would suggest go with the tools the uh, best practices around uh, those tools and also incorporate security little bit what in whatever you are learning so one more question that uh, freshers often ask is uh, coding right so they think that maybe coding is not that much required in devops or uh, what so what do you think about that like do you think uh, coding is uh, really important or how much coding should a person know uh, to get into a fresher devops job so i would not say like coding is very important but it's really a great benefit if you know coding so it's kind of a cherry on top right mm-hmm. so if you have idea about coding if you have some experience about coding so that's really great but as a fresher or or you haven't explored the coding field yet so i would suggest to you know at least learn scripting right mm-hmm. in python also you can you know learn scripting if you are uh, if your question is like should we learn dsa or something like that do we really need that much of coding so i would say in like just understand like how arrays and strings work and how you can you know solve question like easy level question of dsa and uh, little bit of medium level so actually that was supposed to be my next question about dsa but you already answered it but still i think a lot of students have this question like is dsa and coding really required in devops and whether they are asking these questions in uh, uh, interview process whether it's lead code questions or anything and, and i think you have given a lot of interviews and even in google like did they ask you about dsa or what were their coding expectations if you would like to share if dsa is being asked uh, the level of question it could be only max to max medium level so mm-hmm. for as a devops engineer you don't need to you know do dsa for like at the hard level mm-hmm. if you know the easy level of questions then you are good to go as a devops engineer mm-hmm. during my interview at google and also according to my experience i have been mostly asked about python scripting mm-hmm. right and the automations that i can write as a devops engineer uh, if dsa question was being asked to me it was mostly easy level and max to max medium level that i have faced i have never faced a very like hard level of questions and even i would i would say i haven't faced uh, like medium level of question in uh, a lot of interviews so i haven't faced those questions so if you want to go with dsa first try to you know cover up the easy level of questions mm-hmm. and then if you if you are really interested you can move to medium but uh the important thing is to know the scripting and the automations that you can do using different programming languages and i would suggest python is best for best for that okay so you're saying like uh competition level uh, dss is not required but if we, we can cover just the uh, easy level and medium level that should be more than enough right yeah even medium level is not that much required but if you are really enthusiastic you can explore medium level as well. okay so that also uh, reminds me of another question actually regarding certification mm-hmm. so i often recommend people about doing the fundamental certification of any cloud 
whether it's AZ700 for Azure or AWS Cloud Fundamentals. So I think th that is important. But apart from that, to get a DevOps job, do you think uh, the freshers need to do any other certification, maybe about Docker or Terraform? Will that help or is just a you know, cherry on the top kind of thing, not really required? So certification gives weightage to your resume and your profile, right? So if you have a knowledge of something and if you have done certification related to that tools and technology, then, to, then you will have a little bit uh, of weightage on your resume. So that's why I would suggest try to do resume, uh, try to do certification whenever possible. Mm -hmm. And the top certifications that I would like to suggest is like RSCSA that you can do. So it's kind of Linux admin. So as I suggested, Linux is really required for DevOps engineers. So try to do RSCSA certification. Then you can move to Kubernetes certification. So there are majorly three certifications that are very important in Kubernetes. One is CKA, then CKAD. And for freshers, I would not suggest go uh, uh, like go with CKS. It's mostly related to security, so it's a little bit hard. So if you can do any of these CK or CKAD, uh, you can go with that. Try to do a certification in IEC tool as well. So there is a HashiCorp certification in Terraform. Mm -hmm. You can go for that. For the CK, CKAD, which one do you recommend for freshers? CKA or CKAD? So CK is mostly as admin task you can say so if you want to understand the architecture of kubernetes how internally uh, kubernetes work and if you want to you know deploy your own kubernetes version on a bare metal or on your own servers you should uh, go with ck but if you are more interested in the uh, scripting side for example if you are more interested on in creating yaml files for deployments and all i would suggest go with ck ad and i think ck ad is much e easier in comparison to CK. Uh, so if you are just getting started, then I would suggest go with CK AD. That's what I did first. A lot of things will be, you know, similar in both of the certification. For example, it's uh, in CK AD, you will also learn architecture. There will also be questions related to Kubernetes architecture. But in CK, it will be like really uh, deep level of questions, like how different components of Kubernetes architectures, you know, communicate with each other and how can you make them communicate to each other, so these kind of things. So if you want to go as a fresher, just go with CKD. Okay, perfect. So I think that was uh, all for today's video. And if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section and we'll try to answer them as fast as we can. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel DevOps Studio for more such videos around DevOps. And once again, thank you Soumya for your valuable uh, insights on this topic and we will connect again for further topics. Sure, sure. Thank you so much Mohit for scheduling all these. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Bye-bye.